Hey everybody, how's it going? Hope you're all good. Hope you're all well. Welcome back to another edition of the Chronicles of Aguna, the Arsenal podcast with me, your host, Harry Simeon. I'm recording today's episode from a very, very special place. Um, I'm at the Emirates Stadium. I'm uh, blessing the hallowed turf uh, ahead of Sunday's big game. I've been in the dressing room as well, uh, praying and all the rest of it uh, to try and give Arsenal the bit of luck that they're going to need this weekend if they're to be crowned Premier League champions. Apologies for the lawnmower in the background. Um, There is a bit of noise inside the stadium, so it might not be the greatest audio, but um, I thought I couldn't pass up the opportunity to record uh, the preview of this weekend's game in the home of football, Emirates Stadium. And this place is going to be absolutely buzzing on Sunday. I think regardless of what the outcome of the title race is, I think everybody looks at this Arsenal team and can clearly see the progress that they've made, can clearly see that they've taken strides forward again under Mikel Arteta, who I think has proven time and time again that he can reinvent the team. If you think right back to when Arsenal won their first FA Cup under Mikel Arteta, it was a completely different setup. It was a completely different group of players, but we showed an adaptability that we all felt had been missing for a long, long time under Arsene Wenger um, and even under Unai Emery. And you look at where the team has come and the, the, the stages of that journey ever since, I think the evolution is clear for everybody to see. You look at what Arsenal were last season, obviously uh, very impressive, went a lot closer in the title race than people thought we could. Um, Obviously, we missed out in the end, uh, but we came back this season and there were a few teething problems, I would argue, in the first half of the season due to us trying to change the style a little bit, trying to adapt. But in the end, that adaptation has seen us be even more competitive over the course of the campaign. And for the first time in a long time, the Premier League trophy will be waiting here at the Emirates Stadium because there's a chance we could win it on the final day. Now, after Manchester City's victory at Tottenham in midweek, it's clear what needs to happen now. Arsenal need to win and Manchester City need to fail to win. If Arsenal better Manchester City's result, they will be crowned Premier League champions on Sunday. And if that is to happen, this place is going to go off. It's going to be incredible. Is it likely? I give us about 10% chance at this moment in time. And that's nothing to do with Arsenal or a lack of faith in Arsenal and their ability to come here on Sunday and beat Everton. I don't think it's going to be as cut and dry and as easy as maybe some people are making it out to be. This is an Everton side that have the second highest number of clean sheets in the Premier League, only behind us. They will frustrate. They're very well equipped to deal with set pieces, something that we've been a real big threat from this season. Um, So I think this is going to be a potentially tricky game, but I've got every confidence in Arsenal that they'll do their bit. The problem is, is that the Etihad, West Ham turn up, David Moyes is on his way out of the football club. This is a West Ham side that have conceded uh, the most goals in the Premier League outside of the bottom three this season. So they're not the defensive resolute unit that we saw for a number of years under David Moyes. And that concerns me, that worries me, obviously, because we're asking them to go to the Etihad and get something. Arsene Wenger once famously said that winning the Premier League for a London club is much harder than for anybody else. And the reason he said that was because of the number of London derbies and, uh, and some of the rivalries that we have in the capital and the impact that they can have. I'm reading online, West Ham fans are desperate for us not to win the Premier League title, just like the Spurs fans were a few nights ago. And so it does feel like the odds are stacked against us. It does feel like it's going to be incredibly difficult um, for, for West Ham to get anything I'm not questioning the professionalism of the players or the manager. You know, I didn't want to do that in the build-up to the Spurs game, uh, Spurs-Man City game that was. And I think I was proved right not to have done that because I do think 
that Postacoglu and his players did go out there with the intention of winning the game. Fair is fair. Unfortunately, they didn't have the backing of the fans. They didn't have the backing of the supporters. And maybe that was what um, prevented them from having that little extra 7-10% that might have seen them get the result that we were looking for and the result that they were looking for in their hunt for Champions League football. How do I see this one going in terms of the match and in terms of um, you know how it's going to play out tactically? Apologies, it feels like the lawnmowers are getting louder. But anyway, uh, they're preparing the surface down here behind me for the big game on Sunday. I think Everton are going to come here and sit back. I think Everton are going to come here and be pragmatic. I think Everton are going to look to hurt us from set pieces and look to hit us on the counter-attack. Facing a low block is nothing new for this Arsenal side. We've been coming up against that kind of approach for many, many years. Um, and even more so, I'd say, in the last couple of years where we've become a real competitive team again. And people look at coming here and are worried about it and fear it and think that the best way to stay in the game for as long as possible is to just drop off that little bit deeper. But we need to be patient. I think the atmosphere in this stadium is going to be dictated by what is going on at the Etihad. If, for example, we're winning our game and Manchester City a level, then there's going to be a buzz, of course, here. But there will be a level of anxiety, too, I'm sure. There will be um, a little bit of a loss of focus from the fans in terms of on this game because they're going to be constantly checking their phones for updates. They're going to be constantly seeking to find out what is going on in that other fixture. But what I'm really, really keen to see is a, a sort of a respect shown to this team, uh, to this manager, to the club for the fact that they've taken us forward again even if it's not going to finish off with us lifting the big one the Premier League trophy and I almost just want us to come here on Sunday and I know it's much easier said than done but just come here and, and have it as a bit of a celebration for another really good positive season there'll be people out there that say if we don't win it there's nothing to celebrate I disagree with that I think that you need to enjoy the journey. I think that you need to enjoy the ride. And I've enjoyed covering the Arsenal over these past two seasons more than I have for a long, long time prior to that. I come here every week with a, an expectation and in a positive way. I come here every week confident that I'm going to see a performance. And I come here every week knowing that we could be anybody in front of us. Um, you know, you look at our 2024 and it's pretty much been flawless with the exception of that one defeat against Aston Villa, which could prove costly. But is that a reflection or an indication of work that Arsenal still need to do? Or is that a reflection of the very, very high bar and standards that Manchester City have set? I would argue it's the latter more than it is a reflection of this team. If we win on Sunday here against Everton, we'd have won 16 of our 18 league games in 2024 with one draw at the Etihad, which is a very respectable result, and just... Um, of course the one defeat here at Aston Villa and the reason that is so costly is because we're up against an absolute juggernaut Manchester City are unbeaten in 21 Premier League games going into this weekend the only uh, dropping of points we've seen have been the four draws that they've had along the way and three of those draws were against the traditional big six if you like uh, Crystal Palace were the only ones that managed to spoil the party a little bit as well so yeah um come here on Sunday enjoy it turn up support the team get behind them um, I don't want to sit here and go through all the tactical stuff and get the tactics board out because I don't think that stuff really comes into Sunday I think Sunday is going to be played with emotion I think Sunday is going to be played with um, mentality more than it is on the tactics board I was listening to Mikel Arteta's interview on Five Live with Guillaume Balague which I'd highly recommend uh, you listen to by the way on my way here this morning and he was talking about the fact that yeah you know a lot of stuff is decided on the tactics board and that makes a difference but not everything is decided on the tactics board not everything is decided in your tactical approach there are things that you need to have as an athlete as a footballer as an elite sports person to get you over the line in difficult moments if we're talking about predictions for the weekend, I think Arsenal are going to win by two goals to nil. That would be my prediction. Manchester City, I think, are going to win very comfortably against West Ham. I'd probably give them a 4-0 victory. Um, and, and whilst it sounds like I'm being like really negative and dismissive of our chances of lifting the Premier League title on Sunday, I think I'd do that more in sort of protection of my feelings than anything else because it's been such an incredible season. Like, I don't want to turn up here, find out, I don't know, on 60 minutes, 65 minutes that 
Manchester City have broken the deadlock against West Ham or that there's no chance of that game being turned around and then be in a sombre negative mood. I want to be um, enjoying the last half an hour or so of our season. I want to be buzzing for it. I want the players to enjoy it, to enjoy the occasion. I'm looking forward to the sort of lap of appreciation after the game. I'm looking forward uh, to seeing some of the Invincibles here as well because they've all been invited in celebration of the 20-year anniversary of that incredible achievement. So I, I want to enjoy it, whatever happens. Now, I know that if we don't win the title, I won't be able to enjoy it 100%, but I want to ensure that I don't spend the time moping around and um, and letting kind of the, the last part of our season pass me by. Because ever since I sort of started working in, in sports media, um, when I get to around about March, because it is pretty full on, when I get to around about March, I do feel like the bat batteries are running out. And I do sometimes, particularly when you've got nothing to play for. Now, that's obviously not the case this season. But I do sometimes start to think I could do with the break now. I could do with the end of the season. But once a week's gone by and I've had time to kind of process it and break it down and recharge the batteries a little bit, I'm like, when are we coming back? When are we going to be here again? And so I want to make sure that I lap up every bit of the final moments here at the Emirates Stadium. The atmosphere, again, this year has been incredible. It's been fantastic. Um, the Ashburton Army, who normally sit over here, have been incredible. The North Bank, always in great voice as well. And you've got um, an improved atmosphere in all the other parts of the stadium due to some of the efforts uh, that have been taken by fan groups, by the club, um, by individuals that attend this place uh, sort of every other week. Uh, it's just been an amazing journey and an amazing ride. And it would be amazing if we could end our season in the best possible way, being crowned Premier League champions for the first time in 20 years but the likelihood of that happening not necessarily because of us but because of the other factors um, involved for me is quite low so you should turn up here with belief with hope but not with a confidence that it's going to happen and I think if you find that balance in terms of managing your expectations and your emotions regardless of how it goes you can come here and you can enjoy the final game and you can enjoy the final performance of the season from a team that have given us so many incredible moments the thing to be most proud of I think is the way we've coped with this running yes we dropped points against Villa that was sandwiched in between the two games against Bayern Munich and I think that was a season defining point if you look at Luton uh, so I beg your pardon, Manchester City, they played Luton in between their two games against Real Madrid. Now, I know they were eliminated from the Champions League and some people will say this is a moot point as a result of that, but they were able to pick up points in the league. They probably would have anyway, but they could go at 60-70% against Luton and still get the job done. Whereas for us, that wasn't the case. And I did feel like in a couple of games in Bayern Munich away, um, Bayern Munich at home, Villa at home, and Bayern Munich away over the course of those three games I do think you saw some fatigue creep in I do think you saw the team's level drop in the second half of those games and ultimately we didn't get the results that we wanted credit to the players credit to the manager for being able to dig deep and find another wind and, and get us to a point where we you know finish the season really really strongly but I remember people looking at our running and saying Tottenham away you're going to lose that and that's going to mess you up Manchester United away you're going to lose that and that's going to mess you up and you know what we've been to both of those places and we've won we've been to both of those places and taken maximum points Mikel Arteta became the first manager since George Graham to win back-to-back -back North London derbies away from home so that says a lot um, about about the progress that we've made we're going to probably finish on uh, a really high points total we've got more victories than the invincibles so I think those are the things that you need to be focusing on regardless of whether we lift the trophy on Sunday night and and that should be at the forefront of your assessment of this season we are going to bring you a full season review um, of course after this season ends that'll be coming out early next week really looking forward to that we'll pick out some of the defining moments some of the highlights some of the lowlights we're also going to do an Arsenal season awards episode where we'll talk about best player most improved and some fun categories as well uh, so loads and loads of content to come please bear with me over the summer because um, I know there's not football to cover but we've got so much to do and so much to get into make sure you're subscribed to the Chronicles of Aguna YouTube channel if that's where you're watching us if you're listening to us on audio make sure you're subscribed and leave us a review it really really does help and if you want to support me to bring you more content over the summer visit our Patreon link in the description below can we do it on Sunday? we can will it happen? Probably not, but I'll tell you what, if it does, 
there is going to be one hell of a party in North London that will stretch from Sunday night right through across into Monday, I'm sure. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. I'll catch you all on the next one. Until then, take care. Goodbye.